Born and raised at Honolulu. Uh, Roosevelt High School. Roosevelt High School. Go Rough Riders, right? Yeah. I've been in the water since I was a kid, uh, mostly surfing. At what point you moved to Kona? Kona, I moved to Kona, I want to say in 2002. And at what point did you pick up uh, one man paddling? I think I started one man paddling at about 2006 as well. I, I did six man paddling before that. What do you enjoy about being out there? I enjoy, you know, just getting away from it all and being out in the ocean and 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 you kind of it's kind of a cleanse to me to to just kind of you know let everything else go and and just be focused on the ocean and paddling kind of a great free feeling that day was was it a family outing was it a club outing the winds came up and whenever the wind comes up we go paddle um, we like to do downwind paddles. So I rushed, finished my job because we're excited to go downwind paddle. And uh, my son's a big paddler, and so he rounded up his friends. We, we rushed down here, loaded up our canoes, and it was just another day, but a, a windy a downwind paddle. The wind creates wind swell, which we like to ride and use or, or catch, kind of like surfing with your canoe. Okay, so you're cruising along. Where exactly are you at this point? We launched out of um, Mayula uh, State Park, um, and the plan was to finish here at Honokahau Harbor. Um, What's the distance there? You know, I think I want to say that's about a 10-mile paddle. Uh, what length of time would that be normally? And maybe a little more than 10 miles, but the, the, the amount of time might have been about a little over an hour. So it's a doable course for you? Oh, totally doable. Um, we do that course all the time. Um, and actually, it was really fun while I was on my canoe. <laughs> it's not like it was something new to us. We do it all the time. It's what we do. Um, what time of day was this? We were running a little late. A couple of the boys um, were running late. So we actually got in the water at about five o'clock. And I expected the paddle to be about maybe a little over an hour, hour half at the most. Um, so it was getting close to sunset. Yeah. So you thought you'd be here at 6.30 p.m.? About. Maybe, yeah, about 6.30. Um, so yeah, it would have been Pretty getting dark, not pitch black dark, sure. but sunset. Sunset, yeah, yeah. So we're on our way, we're having a good time. We let the younger paddler go first, so he's in safe in front of us. Um, we launch and kind of merge together out here by the fishnets, my son and the two other boys. And I stopped to take my glasses off secured them in my pocket and they separated from me but that's fine because I'm the adult here and as long as they're ahead of me I think everyone's okay. The surf was so good and those kids are so fast that now I'm no longer able to see them but it's, as long as they're okay in front of me we're you know we're doing okay. So you got the separation between a little bit of separation. So you were alone at, at some point you were alone. Yeah a little bit um and maybe about five minutes after we separated, I fell off my canoe. A gust of offshore wind hit my ama, and I just fell off. Um, and my leash on my canoe drugged me for a little bit where I could feel tension on it for a little bit. And then it gave, there was no more tension. So I felt like either the leash broke or the knot in my leash slipped out or whatever it was, now I'm not connected to my canoe. And when I came up, I looked, my canoe was maybe, I don't know, 20, 30 feet from me and I was about to grab it. And another wind gust flipped it back right side up and the canoe took off. So I attempted to swim for it again and again, and I just watched the canoe flip and flip and flip and just disappear on me. It was not fun at all. Yes. Um, so was this 
fairly dark or right at sunset? It was right at sunset. Um, there was a little bit of light left. Uh, and you knew nighttime was coming. And nighttime was coming. Could you see the shoreline? I could see the shoreline. Looking at shore, I was guessing maybe I was about five to six miles offshore. Watching your boat sail away from you. That was probably one of the worst parts. Um, it wasn't a panic. It was like a really deep, like, sorrow, like, ah. Uh. And it's not a matter of losing your boat, not. No. It's the fact that it's... It's the fact that it's first. almost dark, yes. and I have to swim all the way back to shore. Um, I still had my paddle, and I, I remember letting my paddle go and thinking I just got to swim back now. Why'd you let your paddle go? Because you, I can't swim good with a paddle. So I let the paddle go and I began to swim. Yeah. I also understand it's kind of a smart choice to let your boat go. Right. And that's one thing. One thing I coach to my son, to the boys that I help coach is if your canoe gets away from you, your leash breaks like it did to me, and you try to swim for it, but you can't. You're going to waste a lot of energy chasing that canoe down. You have to make a decision in either trying to get your canoe or swimming to shore. And at one point, I knew I wasn't going to get my canoe. I can feel the sorrow um, being left alone. You're That's by what yourself. It was. You're by yourself out there. That's what it was. It was like a deep, deep sorrow. And then I started to swim. And I wasn't training to swim, but I have trained to swim. I've had a swim coach from when I raced. I used to do triathlon racing and it, it became comfortable. I was now comfortable swimming. I felt like I was getting in a groove, swimming back, and all I could think of was being so thankful that I had a coach to teach me to swim, and one of the best. Um, in, he is. In Steve Borowski. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what was it about the technique or the method that well, helped you? Well, I just swam freestyle all the way and was comfortable knowing that I've, I, I felt like I've done this before, you know, mm. because I have, just not at dark with no goggles on, I kept thinking that, you know, people do this. I've seen an elderly lady swim the English Channel or have heard of it. There's a teenager that Coach Steve coached swim the Molokai Channel. Yes. And, and that kind of kept me going and feeling a lot comfortable. And then I felt something bump my leg. And I thought, and then here comes another like deep yes. sorrow feeling. I, I, it wasn't, a, I never panicked at all. It was just like, oh. I thought that's the only way that I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make it back is if something bites me or eats me. I don't even know what it was. It could have been a tree branch or I don't know. I didn't stop to, to, to <laughs> find out. I'm gonna swim back to shore. I'm swimming, I'm pacing myself, I'd swim for a bit, stop and breathe. Float? Um, at some points I would cramp here and there, like little ones in my foot or like in my calf. So I'd have to stop swimming and float and just breathe, but it was fine. Cause I didn't, it wasn't, I wasn't in a race to get back. Well, what was uh, the wind and the chop like out there? It was still pretty rough. The, the wind was coming out of the north north, east, so it's kind of slightly offshore and on my left side. Um, but it was good that I'm a right side breather. And I couldn't swim for very long without going off course. A couple of times, I because your eyes are closed and you're swimming and the wind's water's tossing you around. 
I completely spun twice. So I looked to see where I'm at and I'm facing black. And so I figured I could only go for about 10, maybe 15 strokes and stop and look and replace myself. But, but you're aiming for, wherever you were, straight line to the coastline. Yep. You're aiming for the harbor. So I was swimming straight for Home Depot for a while. And on the satellite image, you can see that I come over a ledge or something because the watercolor changes on the satellite photo. And as soon as I was over that ledge, I started getting sucked north. So the current was very strong into the wind. So I was making my way towards shore, but getting pulled north. Yeah, okay. okay. Being that we're near the airport, the airplanes would be flying around mostly in the same direction, like coming straight behind me overhead. I'm looking at every light thinking, oh, maybe that's a helicopter. By the so way, you were thinking that somebody's going to come and I'm get I'm thinking they're looking for me. It's night. It's dark. I know that people are looking for me, but they were just airplanes. I paddled for an hour and then swam for three hours until they found me. No life jacket, no no flotation. Yeah. It's just you tre yeah. treading water, swimming. Swimming, um, I had no other option. I mean, I wasn't thinking that I wasn't gonna swim back. That's all I was doing was swimming back and um, hoping I would get saved because I might have swam two miles in three hours and I was picked up two and a half miles off of shore. So I had two and a half miles more to go. Um, it would have been four, tough. Four, yeah, it would have been tough. Yeah. It would have been tough. What kept you going? Just oh. determination. Yeah, you know, I couldn't give up, but I was really, really hoping to get saved. And every light, every light that came was most, were all airplanes until a light coming out of the south started to come and they were closer to the shore than I was. I, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. I can't, couldn't, can't really judge the distance in the dark, but I seen them coming and holding a line for a while. And it was a different looking light than all the airplanes. So I thought, oh, that's a helicopter and they're looking for me. And they were lower. And so I had to, I pushed, hard to get in their path, to swim in their path, mm -hmm. and they came right to me. Mike, Skyler, and Liam from Sequest. Um, oh, so it wasn't a helicopter, it was- No, it was, it, it was the boat. I don't know the exact story, how they all jumped in and, and came to look for me, but I think they made one pass all the way to Keahole Point, came back, and on their second pass north, they, they ran right into me. It is, it is it's a miracle. It's at huge. night. It's a vast ocean. Yeah. One single body at yep. night. Yeah. No reflectors, nothing. No. That is truly amazing. Yep. And they said that when they're, they're pretty close to me now, I was yelling. Trust, I was yelling for them. Like with all I had. Stop. I had just gotten over two hamstrings cramping so bad because I was pushing to get on in their path. Yeah. I had to stop, but my hamstrings are cramping so bad. I, I'd kind of just gotten over that and I was yelling for them so loud that they said through the wind and the motors that they heard me. Yeah. <laughs> and they didn't see me, but they heard me and they stopped, turned everything off. And I happened to be right in their li light of their boat, so. That's called adrenaline <laughs> and survival. Yeah. It's like you're yeah. determined to do this kind of thing. But what time in the evening was this? I think it was about nine o'clock when they, when they found me. Okay, and they radioed back to? They radioed back, they called everyone on shore and it was like, we found them. And it was funny because they said, we found them and hung up. <laughs> and they're like, and, <laughs> you know, they weren't, they didn't say he's okay. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just so thankful for them and everyone, so you everyone. Get, so you get to shore and. 
I got to shore reunion. What's that? What's and there were maybe a hundred or more people. I, I, my eyes are kind of burned, but and I had a hard time seeing then. But there must have been a hundred more people, hundred plus people here. Um, it's just amazing all the our our paddling community. A, a lot of us, my friends, are all down here walking the beach with their lights. They said that. Let, the beach was lit up with headlights and flashlights and yeah yeah it's good to see your family your, oh yeah your child your son was good yeah yeah um they said they weren't worried they said they said they knew i could swim and and yeah. and um i think the worst part of it was what everyone on shore was thinking everyone on land was thinking the worst you know sure um i think they were more more worried about it than i was i've started swimming with steve borowski in the guppy lane where beginners go and when i started older women were faster than me and that's over the years of of, yeah. of I've become a better swimmer, but I, I mean, all thanks to him. So any word of advice now? <laughs> well, now we take a lot more. Well, you know, we, we're always, we always take precautions. Of course, wear a leash and sometimes we'll strap a, a PFD or something to, to paddlers that, you know, may not be able to swim as well, but, um, We now have, now I now have a tracker watch that, you know, mm -hmm. I can be tracked at, or I can even make a phone call from the watch. Um, um, stronger leash. Stronger leash, double, triple check it. Uh, and something more durable. Something more durable. Actually, maybe we, I started adding a zip tie to it instead of just the yeah. rope. Yeah. Uh, Was your boat ever found? Boat is still not found. It's in Tahiti by now. Maybe Tahiti. <laughs> yeah. Already. You want to say mahalo to anybody? Yeah, I just want to... I want to thank... Not just Mike, Liam, and Skyler, and, and the Nicholsons, and and my... M Charlie Becerra, and, and Eddie Hayward, and... Ho Those are the main people that, that were... You know, they were really grinding it out and looking for me and spreading the word and but the whole uh, not just the paddling community the, uh, so many people in this Kailua Konam I, I realized that they cared you know and it's just amazing that how this community is and it took this incident to 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 make me realize that and man it's just a, it's just an amazing amazing place and people <laughs> thank you very much thank you story of inspiration my friend yeah. story of inspiration nate kotrowski lopez special guest on big island television <laughs>